Hey hey <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Outside In Tu cekek bang, makan kuki Your go to Zara is for honest conversations about relationships and very So if you are ready, let's go Tu cekek eh Tu sedap Sedap sangat demi cookies ya Alright guys, welcome to another episode of Outside In Today we're going to be talking to a couple A married couple with three kids Mm-hmm Special kids, mm-hmm. and we're gonna talk about how to take uh, care for uh, special needs. Mm-mm. How we yeah. go about, and we're gonna learn and uh, to raise awareness as well. Yeah, that is our mission for today to mm. raise awareness about yes. autism, so that everyone would know what we need to do. That's not right. Just, not just you know like I like gini gini. No, mm. you must raise awareness. Yes. Yeah, so, okay, so before all that, yeah. Before this that, episode is brought to you by your Renovus. Hi, welcome to our house. <laughs> welcome to our five-room resale flat. This is our living room. Um, originally, this used to be a bedroom here, but we opted for it to be hacked down so that we can expand the living space and also extend the balcony at the end there. As you can see, it's a unique concept rather than the normal HDB balconies because it's extended and also the floors are leveled. We also have a separating sliding door um, if we want some privacy or just some quiet time away from the living room. Over here, we have the living room. Um, almost everything here is either thrifted or bought secondhand off Carousel, Facebook Marketplace. So for an example, our console, we got it for $150. Our coffee table was only $30 from Facebook Marketplace. And so far, is $60 each, which we reupholstered and yeah, we refined it. So welcome to our dining room. Yeah, so uh, we also in- told our contractor, uh, your works that we wanted to instill shelves just for decoration purposes. We also got this off Carousel, I believe, for $150. It's real wood. So we uh, refurnished it, polished, and we also reupholstered the seats. I'll bring you to the kitchen. It's my favorite part of the house. What we have here is actually um, a full bottom tub pantry, quartz countertop up to the backing. So, uh, one of the purpose is actually when we all cook, then it's easier for us to clean. Down here, we actually have some hidden drawers as well. So we have the forks and spoons. You can hide here. You can maximize space. We are actually able to make it um, open, so it doesn't need to be a drawer specifically. Latte for yeah. yeah, sharing so how we could maximize so I could store more things inside. Yeah, yeah. So this yard area where we hit all the pipes to have more storage, right? Oh, this is the pipe actually. Okay. Okay, so this is our guest toilet. As you can see, we've kept the ledge. With the help of your Reno Works, we also managed to cover up the toilet pipings uh, with LED. So welcome to the bedroom. Our main bathroom is similar to the one uh, as our guest. It's just that we had more fun playing with the floor tiles because it's more personal at this point. So this is our house that we've built together with the help of your Reno Works. Um, honestly, and everything down to the detail that we've planned, they've made yeah. it, like Latte has made it come to life. And we are always very happy in our home. We've never had a day where, you know, we like um, are not happy about something. So I think that's the epitome of a great successful uh, home renovation. Yeah. Thanks, Latif. Thanks, Latif. Thanks, guys. Masuk sekali je lah. Yeah, so if you're looking for a, a renovation. and trustworthy renovation company, contact your Renoworks at 8383-7879 8383-7879 yes. Or you can head on, head on over to their socials on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook Yes At Y-O-U-R-R-E-N-O-W-O-R-K-S Yes, and quote outside in to get uh, attractive refresher <laughs> <laughs> To get attractive prizes, prizes yeah. from Stara Yeah It was what to do <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can get water dispenser, yes, yes. air purifier, or even a massage chair. That's yeah, right. Just, just code outside in on your first inquiry. Yeah. Okay? So, get your dream <coughs> home today with your Renault Works. Alright. Okay, uh, without further ado. Sedak lah, ya Allah. Okay, without further ado, let's invite our very fun and lovely couple, Failani and Shahida. <laughs> Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so hi guys, thank you so Hello. much Hello. for coming over to 
outside in. Yeah, sorry Thank kita punya kok up sikit. Yes, 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 <laughs> it's okay. <coughs> Today is Goja. Right, Goja. Ah, kita punya kita punya uh, mall to uh, kita punya team today is Goja. Yeah, Goja. 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 Yeah, yeah, fun fact. Uh Felani and Shahida are my secondary school seniors, seniors apparently. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Serious. Yeah. For <laughs> <laughs> But I think I think when I go into the school, they already graduated lah. Mm, mm, mm. But what a small world, mm. right? And oh, the, wo- the woodlanders. Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys meet in Woodgo? No. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, we were always I didn't, I didn't our, she yeah. Our cross was always uh, our paths are always like parallel to each other. Yeah. Mm. Okay. We didn't meet in Woodgrove, but somehow our paths like always align. After secondary school, graduated. I know I knew him, you didn't know I existed. Sorry. You were the cool <laughs> he, he was the cool kid. Mm. The singer. Always on stage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, the, he's the kind you know, like with a gang and then right, they, right, they right. enter the parade square and you're like, okay, don't have time. Right. They're very loud and everything. Um, so he was out there with mm-hmm. the hair. Oh, the, last the time the I saw you had like it. Uh, no. No. You had an yeah. emo okay. hair. Uh, yeah. We had connected. The we, free hair. we all had phases, okay? Yes. <laughs> yeah, we are not proud of it. Can you laugh with Mr. Justin? Mr. Justin is their buddy, you know. They get away with things. No, got away. <laughs> hey, there was one time I came to school with like a stubble. Yeah, because I'm hairy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then Mr. Justin just called me out. So I like, know, but he's very come here. lenient. Like, come on. Yeah. Then I had to shave on the spot. Okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah. But just so, so you guys yeah. know, when I was in the school, Mr. Justin was the discipline master. He uh, was. He was yeah. during our time also. Yeah. Right? Is it? Is it? Pretty sure he's. Oh, before that. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, he was. He was during our time also. Yeah. So yes, uh, I was the choir girl and I was in debate team. Mm. What does Felani have to say about choir girls? Ah, they are the lovely. Oh, wow. <laughs> Love choir girls. That was, so, that was different from what we heard just now. Correct? The shock of his life. Right? You got the shock of your life. Over the moon. When I heard you were choir girl. Wow. <laughs> so you didn't have any interactions while in school. Nas. No. So how did so the strange. love start? Well, wow. after that, <laughs> we went to art school. Oh, yeah. I was a fashion student. She was in Nafa. Uh-huh. I was in LaSalle. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So we always meet in that. Somehow our cross, uh, our paths cross. always cross. We each always other. see each other like across the street, yeah. things like that. Never really oh. interacted though. But yeah. you knew him, you keep seeing him, right? Yes. Yeah. So I could keep seeing him. <coughs> and then um, I think yeah. we started seeing each other. We were also Facebook friends, kind of thing. Yeah. And then, then he started noticing where, started. where he was like, eh. You're that girl. And then, you're from Woodgrove? How? Mm. When? So we started from there. Like, oh, you're a Woodgrover too? Yes, I'm a Woodgrover too. And then Me we too. bonded over the hair, la, I think. What, his hair? No, la, we both like had emo hair. hair. <laughs> <laughs> we started talking about, to, I mean, MSN days. Yeah, oh my MSN God, we're yeah. revealing our, our, our age yeah, indirectly. Yeah. But we are MSN people. Yeah. He so he keeps nudging so on MSN. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nudge, nudge, nudge. <laughs> then if that you want to get attention, you uh, <laughs> sign in, sign off, off, offline, offline. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
You yeah. just wanted to ask me out. So right? from then, yeah. <laughs> it was just funny excuses, lah. Funny excuses. So from then on, it hit off, like. Yeah, we hit off wow. then. So we met each other very young. I think it's been seventeen years. Wow. wow. Like sort of since we first met, and then. Oh my god. Yeah. God. So we sort Day-to-day of la. always. <laughs> We grew up with each other. Mm. Wow, that's so yeah. sweet. We huh? grew in front of each other, yeah. Yeah, indirectly. We grew up with each other, yeah. So the the Easy. the whole um, motion mo- motion blood, <laughs> the whole story from you in secondary school, of no no ah, I cannot even talk. There was no interaction <laughs> back yeah, then. Yeah. No and more then cookies for you. So. <laughs> 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 a little bit high on the cookies. No, it's the interaction and then they they, yeah. they went to different paths, paths, different schools, but it's always in line. And mm-hmm. then somehow rather, um, who who made the first move again? During okay, the me, me, me. ah, so Felani realized that <laughs> Chaida was someone yeah. that he knew, yeah. and then you right. okay, like how move. I tell everyone mm-hmm. like that factor that really pulled me into her was how she was with her nephews and nieces. Mm. Oh. Like, I, I told myself, like, wow. Like, she's very endearing and very, like, very loving towards her nephews and nieces. Mm-hmm. So, when you I, saw that. Yeah, so I want that trait of, like, the mother to my kids. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, so I was like, oh. then I got That's her. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I sweet. love kids. Yeah. yeah, I really yeah. love kids. I always that mommy da. But you know, mommy every da. anniversaries or whatsoever. Hey, are you free? Mm. Yeah. So we always have a third wheeler, which is my nephews and yeah, so my nephews though. will Our always follow. Always consists of nephews. Yes. Oh, oh so sweet. Yeah. Silly. So we, yeah, we sort <coughs> of have a, yeah. you know, a bond, a bond that way yeah. because I think he saw how I was with kids, mm-hmm. and then when I first knew that I think I fell for you, it's because of. That period, I had a very tough period. Mm-hmm. Um, my uh, late nephew, he was, I think, eight months young. Mm-hmm. He <coughs> got into, uh, yeah, like a brain trauma incident where he slept oh. in a coma for about a month and then passed on. Mm-hmm. So during that period, I sort of went in and then, you know, took care of my wanted to help my brother and my sister-in-law let's like, totally be in that moment with um, <laughs> dearest Issa back then. So they had another uh, well, firstborn. Mm-hmm. So he was, uh, yeah, Iman, and then I was telling myself, okay, I'm going to try and help to come in to Iman and let him feel just happiness and joy and distract oh. him a little because he's only one years old. Yeah, and you understand. could feel the tense, like, you know, you're at a hospital and he's always brought to the hospital. So yeah. it was a routine for me. Every eight in the morning, we will go together. Mm-hmm. I would meet my brother and say, I will take Iman, we'll go to Vivo City, we'll go everywhere. So sort of everybody was um, grieving at that point. Mm-hmm. Everyone around. And he was, yeah, it was... So, so that that point, I I think I didn't give, I didn't realize it, but I was just going with emotion, just swooping Iman in, and just wanted to be that aunt for him. Mm. Oh. Um, but then at that one moment, um, I think he he noticed that, hey, um, where is this girl? Where she's go? Where is she going? Because I I didn't reply text. Oh. I was absent. So that's when um, he sent me an audio note one day. Oh, um, I, I was about to rush out after subuh prayers, and then. Yeah, he sang me uh, Coldplay, <coughs> the scientist. scientist. Mm. Ah. I think it's that part where he's, you know, that nobody said it was easy. Mm-hmm. No one ever thought it could be this hard. And then I just started crying. Oh. And I realized, okay, you know what? You can meet me at first. Uh, let's meet for a while. <laughs> 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 and then, so after a day, a full day at the hospital, I met him at the playground. <laughs> <laughs> Muscling, right? No way else to go. Yeah, we were at a playground, <laughs> so we were talking, and then I told him, like, hey, I, I just deleted Issa's videos. I'm that kind of aunt that recorded everything of my nephews, oh. but I deleted his videos because I didn't have space. So I was mm. deleting some of my nephew's videos, including Issa's video, and I told him, I said, I could not even recognize him anymore because he had a brain injury, so his head was really bloated. I could not remember how he looked like. So I said, I, I was, I was kind of crying to myself and going like, hey, you know, I, I cannot recognize him. So that's when he, and I said, and then silly me, I deleted all the videos. Oh. And that's where he was like, oh, 
But um, <coughs> I kept every single one of your nephew videos that you sent to me. I was like, are you serious? Then I'm like, why did you Why did you even keep them? Then he's like, no, I love kids too. Aww. You know? Um, so yeah, I kept every single one of them. I didn't delete. So I started to see his video. And that's when I started crying so badly. Because then I realized everybody else had a moment and a time and space to grieve and be yes, alongside my nephew. But I barely see him because I was just... Trying to be the there for my brother and sister-in-law mm. indirectly by not letting them worry about. Don't yeah. worry about your firstborn. I got him. Mm. Mm. I got Iman. Yeah. Even until to the point where they pulled the plug mm. from Isa. Yeah. Um, everyone else was outside the room. Iman was together inside with the brother and my brother and then my sister-in-law. They pulled the plug and Iman started crying very badly. Oh my God. So I, they of course automatically give it give, give Iman to me. So I, I took Iman. I ran to one corner of uh, NUH. He was sitting there, and I was just he fell asleep on my arms. And oh. then I received a text. Okay, he's officially passed on. Like I think maybe yeah, a few hours after that. So I wasn't even there outside the room when that thing happened mm. because I was with Iman. It's a, it's, a, it's, a right, it's a rightful place. I felt that like I need to be there for Iman. So how, I was how can you not get married to that? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. This is so <laughs> sweet. So wow. yes, I mean wow. at that point because he was there. He was there. He was waiting and always there when whenever I needed mm-hmm. someone. Because I was kind of mm-hmm. like grieving alone. I didn't even realise it until I met him that day and I realised, oh my God, I haven't cried. I haven't cried mm-hmm. at all. And it happened during my birthday. My... My uh, my brother texted me happy birthday, Shaida. And then the next text, oh, we are rushing Isa to the ambulance and he's not mm. breathing. Yeah. So that was oh. when everything oh. happened. Huge emotional roller coaster. Yes. Day. Every time <laughs> my birthday, it, something happens. It's like a huge <sighs> reminder for me that life is really short. Because oh, the years on, then um, mm. my son was on the ICU during yeah. my birthday. So yeah. I was. Oh. Yeah. And, it and was, get this, the yeah. doctor that was attending to Issa is the same doctor that attended, attended to our oh, son. Wow. Eight son. years later. Wow. Wow. She was Protest like, this is circle. mind-blowing. Because she said, I was on leave for two weeks. I wasn't around. I came back, I saw this is my first big case. Because my son was critically ill. Mm-hmm. And um, then he said, and then she said, Bunny. Because she remembered Issa. Mm-mm. And they all remembered my family because the turnout was insane. They've Everyone never seen... That kind of turn out. Mm-mm. So he, she was like, I've, but then I've met you before eight years ago and this is not how I want to meet you again. Oh my you know, <laughs> but okay, so you've been here. <laughs> so I sort of been there. And I remembered when I entered the ICU room, Issa's room was there. I remembered. So I was like, yeah, so when I walked past, I was like, Memories. oh, yeah. Wow. And then now I see my son in the same kind of state, like mm. wire everywhere. Oh Mashallah, mashallah. Yeah, so um, wow. Allah is the best of planner. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of planner. Because mm-hmm. I feel like everything was just there. <laughs> yeah. so I'm in space. In a way, having that doctor to be attending to your son's case would, was, uh, would you was consider a blessing? Vital. Yeah, it, was it was so really blessing. And because, my, get this, my brother and my sister-in-law, mm-hmm. um, they already migrated to Australia. Oh, okay. So, whilst I was there eight years ago for them every single day, um, when my son was in the ICU, they were not there. So, oh my God. yeah, they were at Australia. Mm-hmm. So my brother actually said me, uh, uh, tell, told me, oh, it's Doctor Tong. He said, okay, then you're in good hands. Now I, now I can breathe easy. Oh, mm-hmm. Yeah, he said that. Yeah, so, so I sort of, know. I felt like okay, they are kind of near me because it's Doctor Tong. Doctor. And Doctor Tong is amazing. I still remember it. Shout um, out to Doctor Tong. Shout out! <laughs> yeah, she is amazing. I remember I was I didn't think I could go through that <coughs> because all our sons were, yeah. you know, so at the same time. So basically, like I think a hospital has some protocols that they have to go through, like okay. sometimes because there there have been cases of like baby shaken syndrome and all that. Mm-hmm. So um, they the oh. protocol was they had to call <laughs> in like um, child services, right? Was it okay, so um, police. Yeah, basically. Well, well, we are talking about it now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, you can push my, into it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, Bilal Omar. Um, uh, yeah, what happened was basically that one day, he started crying profusely. He's, um, I just gave birth to him about three weeks. He's young. your second child? Our, my third child. Third child, okay. 
Yeah, so um, I was in, still in confinement. Masih pantang, pantang mm. socks and everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I gave him milk and then I slept. And then I remembered hearing him cry super badly. Like it was wailing and couldn't be comforted. So mm. I thought, okay, never mind. You know, mother being mother took him. I tried to comfort him, tried to give him milk. Nothing happened. Um, he still wasn't. Crying. He was still crying so badly. Mm. Nothing was stopping him. We started to read surahs, and then you know, I started going back and forth. Like he tried. To, my mom tried to soothe him. Mm. My husband tried to soothe him. And then in the end, I said, "This is terribly wrong." Because as a mom, you know that instinct. Something's like right. if I if my milk don't soothe you, then there, there must something be something. Else, yeah. So um, I remembered when I held him. That one point, he was he was twitching. Oh. All on the left side, um, the eyes, the hand, and the leg was kicking all at once. Like a seizure. Yeah. yeah. So I didn't know. So I I just googled in a, in a frenzy and realized that they say it might ha- be having a seizure. Mm-mm. So I sort of anticipated his seizures, and then he twitch. He would twitch, and then he cry very badly, and then he would just fall asleep again. Oh. And wow. then it's like a cycle. It happened again. So when that was happening, I rushed to my husband. I said. Look at this. Is this normal? Like, Mm-mm. we've had two other kids before and I took care of my nephews when they were baby too. So I was like, this is not normal. Like, I'm Mm-mm. like, then he said, okay, this is not normal. I think we should rush to the A&E. Mm-mm. Yeah, so um, thankfully my parents was there. But because, you know, our situation is, my first born is, you know, autistic and then my second born also has a medical condition. Mm-hmm. My, my father was nice enough. He looked at me, he said, you go with your husband because initially he was supposed to go mm-hmm. and thankfully I went because when we went you knew you know it's a serious case when there is the hospital you know the, the whole team is children A&E yeah. was so filled with people you knew oh. it's a big case <coughs> when I came in to talk about my child mm-hmm. he immediately had to be brought in oh so I was so like you the whole queue yeah <laughs> so I, I called my mom and I said hey I think it's really serious because mm. they are asking me to go with Isa in now, so I can't get back as soon. She said, no worries. All they can care of, you just focus. So uh, she said, no, banyak doa and everything. We were there. And then that's where we told them about the situation. Mm-hmm. So initially they said, okay, your child might be having a seizure, but we need to observe it. Yeah. So um, uh, they saw it. And then right before they said, okay, I'm, we're going to bring him to a general ward mm-hmm. and we're going to observe him. So they need to hook him up and everything. So right before he was hooked up, that thing happened again. The, the twitching. Oh. And then the crying and then the sleeping. It's like a cycle and, uh, again. Yes, again. and then yeah. my that, that, uh, the nurse saw it and said, okay, I need to call the doctor. The doctor saw it in mm-hmm. front. She saw it. She looked at me and she said, okay, so what's, that, what's happening is that your child is having a seizure and his brain is firing everywhere. Oh. So he's in pain. Oh, when he cries, crying. he's literally, the brain is shooting everywhere. So he's in pain. And then he's drowsy too. Right after that incident, he mm. would just fall asleep and then it happens again. So then they know. And r- in a split second, you know, they just, okay, took my son and then closed him behind the curtain. My husband and I were separated just by a curtain. Yeah. And we could hear the doctor going like, bring me the knife. A large oh. knife, everything. Then he, they pulled oh. the curtain oh. out and then told me, okay, uh, he's in a major, uh, he's in a critical condition. We cannot send him to the uh, to the general ward. We need to send him to the, uh, to the ICU. I see you. And then he closed it back again. And then that's why I was like, just, I lost it. I think we both lost it. That was the critical moment we were like, because his diagnosis came August, right? Mm-hmm. I just gave birth. Mm-mm. My second one was diagnosed on March with branchial cleft remnant. And then July was my first born with his autism. <sighs> so we already went March and then July. knew about our second born. And then July knew about Farrell's autism. And then when after okay. I gave birth, I remember we were even having a conversation. We were like, hopefully this one. I, I had a conversation with my hair, hairdresser <laughs> before, before I went into labor. Okay. I said, hopefully my third born is normal. Because, uh, uh, you mm. know, the first two just got diagnosed, things like that. So, yeah. We, I had that conversation. And then this happened to Bilal. So, mm. I remember when, when that was happening, the frenzy was happening. They were separating us and they said, you can't go in first. We need to. He is really in a critical condition. Mm. So, then I looked at him and I said, wow. Um, that, this is my, I think, the pinnacle point of my grieving process. So, I looked at him and I said, oh, uh, Maybe my womb is cursed or something. I'm really sorry. (laughs) 
And then, um, yeah, he, he cannot say anything. I think because he was grieving too, so he helped me. And um, that was when the doctors told us about the situation. But it got very hard because she was like, okay, your son is only an infant stage, right? So she said, there's no way he could have this brain trauma because the CT scans came and his brain was bleeding. Oh. So they start asking us hard questions like who was with him last? Um, mm. Did any Was anybody so rough with him? I'm trying to find uh, How fault. did you handle? Yeah, who was <coughs> last with him? Is there a big gathering, you know, that happened or whatsoever? Anything, anybody you knew that could have harmed him? That's oh. where we, we understood, oh, they thought it was like a baby shaken syndrome mm. because my son couldn't possibly get a brain bleed because he couldn't, he couldn't you know, roll yeah, or whatsoever. Newborn. Yeah, three weeks. Yeah. So they mm. thought, yeah, so we had asked us and it was a strange period because we both look at each other and say, it's, we only, we're the only ones who took care of him, mm. me and my husband, but I would never, like, your worry, child, right? right? <laughs> I would never harm him. And, and then we started asking each other, like, did we shake him too hard? Yeah, was it the cord? Yeah. What is it? And everything. And in that moment, then she just cut us and she said, um, this, so what will happen now is that I'm going to hand this case over to the police. <gasps> police? Yeah. See, it's a, it's a, it's a, a protocol. A, it's a protocol. Oh, they, yeah. they, they felt that it could be a sign of Correct. Uh, abuse, yeah. is it? Right. Yes, like a baby chicken syndrome. Yeah, but I mean... Um, yeah. Uh, we, I mean, we don't blame them uh, because there have been instances. Incidents. Uh, but that I mean, you have two happened. kids prior to this. Yes, you would correct. have known how to look after a baby, right? Yeah, but I mean, but it was <laughs> tough. But, but that's where Dr. Tong was a blessing though. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. She that's looked why. at our faces and she just told us, you know what, I already told the police that you don't need to interview No, them. no, no, that was... Mm. Yeah. She told us that only because of the MRI scan. Yeah, yeah. 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 MRI scan. So what happened then was... Uh, then we had a very tough interview with the social service person. <laughs> she okay. interviewed us in the afternoon, the next day afternoon, she interviewed us and asked us a lot of hard questions, asked us about our two kids. Mm. And the fact that they were just diagnosed and everything, so she's like, how you guys mentally, you know, and um. all that. And I'm like, I'm fine, you know, uh, they are my kids, I would never, you know. Then she said, okay, so this is the protocol. I have to tell you that after... <laughs> Um, uh, this happens after we hand the case to the police then social s child social services will come in mm -hmm. if they see anything amiss then they're going to take all three of your child oh my god and so I was like <laughs> I remember it was, I was, it was very hard for me and wow. because I, I just, I'm in postpartum right yeah. so I'm like Okay, what? Then I just started like, but you know, I'm not doing anything to my child and stuff. And she said, don't worry, I believe you. Because, you know, after this interview, I feel like I don't think there's anything. But this is protocol. I just have to tell you, mm. you know. Yeah. But not until then the MRI scan came, then it was clearer. So that's when the head of ne the neurologist that was in charge of my child's case, Dr. Jeremy. We're still seeing him till today. Okay. So thank you, Dr. Jeremy. But yeah. yes, Dr. Dr. Jeremy came and then I told him, like, should I worry? Like, what's happening? Can you tell me the latest? Mm -mm. He looked at me and he said, um, okay, I, I would worry if I was you. Let me show you his scan. And his scans, until today, I could remember it. Because, you know, a clear brain scan, you would see like a line, an mm -mm. outer line. But for my son, it was all like white. Oh. Yeah. Then he said, okay, through the MRI, we noticed that he even have blood clot, like old blood also. Okay. And then his bottom part of the brain is abnormal. So he said, this couldn't be a brain bleed caused by a brain, like uh, mm -hmm. an abuse or whatsoever, because um, usually when that happens, by the second day, he, the patient would stop bleeding already. Mm -hmm. But your son is still bleeding. And then we saw, uh, we saw old blood clot as well. So that means he's been bleeding for a while, even inside your womb. Oh. So seizures in a womb is the thing. But it's very, very rare that it happens. I remember okay. that I recall. I said, I remember telling my guy, I'm so much, I was so much in pain when I was carrying Bila issue. towards the end. Um, I even told her I couldn't walk, you know. And then she she thought it was a different thing. But now I now it makes sense because when I read mm -hmm. about seizures in the womb, yeah, it's it's a very it's painful, electrocuting so almost it's feel. What you felt it's you what I felt. Oh. But it was very rare. So no doctors could have sort of New. So only it. until Bilal's brain scan came, then they said he might be having seizures even in your womb. Wow. So um, yeah, that happened. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so then that's where Dr. Tong was a blessing. Mm -hmm. She came in and she immediately told them, okay, you know what? I Don't worry. I've already told the police to back down. This is not a foul case. Wow. Anyway. 
Thank yeah, you, Doctor Tong. Yeah, yeah. but that, yeah, she <laughs> sort of was like a protector, yeah. right? That's when Doctor Tong was really blessed, and it was COVID. COVID period. Oh Ooh. my god. So it was even more isolating because yeah. yes. people cannot. Not so many people was can come in. Was your husband in. allowed to go in? Only one at a time. Oh. So it was a bit tough because we can't really like be there for each <coughs> other at mm. that same moment. It's only when I'm like, I'm break orang. Like, you know, my grand, uh, my father wants to see or whatsoever, then, mm-hmm. you know, they go in and we will be downstairs. Right. But oh it was God. very tough wow. because it was COVID. So you feel even more isolated. It was a very pain. Like, mm. it was a very tough journey. I remember Dr. Tong was also blessing because it was it was COVID. But then mm. I remember she, um, when my son was transferred to the general where I remember she looked at me, she said, because I was panicking, I was like, how do I do this? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then that's where she had that big talk with me. She said, okay, um, infants that has seizures, Mm-mm. that never happens. That almost never happens. Oh. So she told me, she said, she looked at me, she said, so he was about a month young. A month. Um, then she said, okay, so I need to tell you that he is going to grow up different. <sighs> He's not going to be normal. And then he, she said to me that... Um, uh, sorry. <laughs> she said to me that um, it, he's not going to, you know, um, achieve the same milestones as his peers. Things like that. He's, he's going to be slower, mummy. So then she, she said to me, um, but, you know, I know. I know it's a tough moment for you. Your, your other child, your firstborn just got diagnosed with autism. Second born has a medical condition. So she looked at me, she said, but I looked at you, mommy, and I know that you can. <laughs> she just hold me. And then she said, I know it's COVID, but I'm going to hug you right now. Oh. Yeah, so Dr. Dr. Tong is really oh, a Dr. blessing. Tong. I think that's why my it, it sort of felt like she was in Altala knows that she was like in the replacement of my brother and my sister, you know. Because I remember when my brother called me, I'm like, I really wish you were here, <laughs> you know. Mm. Because eight oh. years ago, I was there for them. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Ooh. Oh, sorry. Oh, <laughs> Melani, how, how, how do you feel as a husband when she had that talk with you saying, I'm sorry, my, my womb is cursed and words like that? Like, how, how do you feel? Um, at that given point and stage, of course, I was distraught. It took me a while to like gather my thoughts mm. about it. But I remember telling her this one thing. I mean, first, our firstborn was born autistic. Then our second born was um, Ankle Cleft Remnant. remnant. So basically, (coughs) for those who doesn't know, it's basically like a small hole in your chest. Mm -hmm. So there's always Mm -hmm. like liquid coming coming up from the hole. Yeah, but Alhamdulillah, he just went through operation like surgery surgery to close up to close up the. There's another hole that came came out. Yeah, so he's still under monitor. Correct. Then our third born is born with multiple um, medical conditions. So she did tell me, she did ask me, like, do you think my womb is cursed? Uh, uh, and she apologizes for giving me a hard <laughs> life and Not all sure. that. But I remember telling her that day that, you know, like, f- through all my years of living, right, I never thought that I had a chance to go to Jannah. But you blessed me with three special needs kids. You gave me, like, a high chance to go to Jannah. Because of my kids. Wow. So he she said thank you. Goosebumps. I said wow. Like, wow. Yeah, he said thank you for giving birth to them. Yeah. MashaAllah. Because for the longest time, I think when you were in that grieving process, the longest time, I was apologizing. I kept telling you, I'm really sorry. They gave I mean, you three it's, children. It's, it's only human, right? Yeah, yeah. Like so I went, so yeah, things. I think it's because that was the pinnacle program, a uh, pinnacle point of, of our grieving process. Yeah. Where we were trying to process all three of our kids and mm. we just diagnosed. So I think I, I went through a lot of period of like, I'm so sorry. I kept apologizing to him. There was even stuff, some tough moments where I'm like, maybe if you wouldn't be with me, like, you know, yeah. you could have got the normal kid. It's things not, but like it's not that. the case, right, Lenny? definitely not. We are here. That was the grieving process, which I must say, it's really important for, for, for you and your partner to go through. If you're going through a diagnosis, it's very tough. But it's really important to really go through the grieving process mm-hmm. to get to acceptance. How, how would to you, as a husband, right? Okay, coming from husband to husband, let's say we were to be like, we went through all this, right? What is your coping mechanism for you? I mean, you felt, we would have felt things, right? <laughs> wow, my yeah. coping mechanism. Yeah, because we hardly hear 
uh, yes. perspectives from guys, Correct. from fathers. So why not we hear it from you? How was your coping mechanism in when you were told about all this news, when you see your wife in that situation? Um, for yourself, how was it? I must say, it, it isn't easy. Mm-hmm. Um, it plays with your iman and faith sometimes. Like you, sometimes you tend to question like, Ya Allah, like, why did this happen to me? Why is it happening to my child and all that? Mm-hmm. But at the same time also, you have to be an imam. You have to be a good, you have to be a strong leader for your family, mm-hmm. especially to your wife. You see, it's like a, almost an instinctive mm-hmm. thing. Like you see your wife not okay. Okay, no matter how you are grieving, no matter how you are feeling low, you have to step out. You have to be a good support to your wife. Um, my coping mechanism, I guess, how did I? I mean, how was my <laughs> I don't know. First, it's you like shaved time, your head. Like, <laughs> shaved your head. <laughs> that was random. Though. After <laughs> Farrell got diagnosed, yeah. he came Everyone out has bald. A different I was like, are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. He just went, I'm fine. I'm like, okay, I guess that's how he sort of coping. <laughs> um, but I think it's, I don't know. Your I don't really have a coping mechanism per se. Mm-hmm. But as time goes by, you get to like, compartmentalize your thoughts Mm-mm. and banyak istifar and it's all about perspective uh. mm-hmm. like yeah. y- perspective is very very mm-hmm. important yeah. like if you're gonna see yourself as like oh why Allah do this to me like oh m- maybe Allah hates me well that's why I'm like cursed with all li- uh, like you know special needs mm-hmm. kids and all that mm-hmm. yeah, it's all about really about perspective it's the most number one key I must say mm-hmm. to really like either make you grow or break you yeah yeah. I think I think the fact that he mentioned like you know this is a this is a ticket to Jannah you know uh, earlier on that that itself is a different perspective you know yeah. when you first uh, get right. this kind of thing because I'm pretty sure um, I, I'm pretty sure we've heard a lot of people sharing their stories like why me why me why me right? Right. but when you have this perspective this mindset change that this is actually a test from Allah for you to go to Jannah inshallah yeah. you know it, that that changes a lot it yeah. gives you it drives you further to to be more you know Im- uh, to to get more iman for yourself mm-hmm. yeah correct for your, for your family as well i mean that's what we always centered upon uh, even mm. our marriage like as much i mean we're uh, i'm not saying that we are like super pious and like <laughs> no, 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 nothing like that but we always um remind each other and put religion in the center of our marriage mm. i i feel that i feel that that is the recipe that constantly whatever happens like it always constantly works Mm. Mm-hmm. Like the remember. it's our anchor mm-hmm. in it's many really moments. Anchor. It's the center. I always say, I love you for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. But what that, that does that mean comprehensively? Mm-hmm. So it's not until you set your heart with clear intentions and put Him at the center of every decision, right. everything you make. Mm-hmm. He is the anchor. Like Allah Taala is the anchor, and He gave us this religion and this faith. And once you heavily. We always go back to that. When we are mm. having really <coughs> tough days, ah, okay, we know that we have to regroup. How can I find seek comfort in him? And that's the center of our relationship also. In yeah, fact, our sure. wedding, yeah. the hashtag is faith always wins. Mm. Um, wow. Yeah, we... This <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> it always wins, yeah. So we, we always ground ourselves, but we, I think it's not until I... Yeah, the grieving processes that you mm-hmm. go through, um, when you go through the grieving process, we both o- also have this common intention, common goal where, okay, once we grieve, how do we be present for our kids? Mm-hmm. We have to work hard. We both knew it in us that I want to work hard for my kids right now. How can we best support them? That was when um, everything took off for me. I saw things in a very different perspective because I started reading about autism. Mm. I started reading about disabilities. And the thing is, Bilal also has a very rare condition. Mm -hmm. Bilal has cerebral palsy. He has cortical visual impairment, cortical deafness. And uh, he also lives with epilepsy. Dr. Tong also told me uh, when he was one man young, she told me that he is going to be on seizure meds indefinitely. Oh. He will live with seizures every single day. So my son lives with seizures every single day too. So yeah. Wow. So when I start, but when I start learning about their disabilities, um, my the best gift that my sons give to me is that you know they taught me that I'm a student till the part the day I part from this dunya. Mm. So I went back to the books. I started learning. I started buying every book that is related to autism. 
and even cortical visual impairment has. Can you imagine a sea of visual impaired books? There's only two books on CVI. Ooh. Oh, two. Yes, because cortical visual impairment is a very wow. rare thing. It's growing now, but it's still in research. So there's, so there's no, the there's state no that cure way. for it. Right? No. Probably yes. And uh, so, <laughs> yeah. So when when I started reading about what is autism or what is cerebral palsy, all this. Uh, that's when it gave me a, a really like a renewed strength, renewed purpose. Mm. You start seeing things in their perspective because then you realize it's not so scary after all. Mm. Mm. It's not that they are broken. It's not that they need fixing because I think that's the number one thing. There was a lot. There's a lot of mums and parents. Right? Uh, there was a lot of parents who are in support need group. Mm -mm. You know, they always have this like uh, when they see fire, they're like, oh, he looks normal. Where do you send him to? Who's the therapy? Which school? Mm -hmm. You know, there's always the this fight with like wanting to make them normal. This obsession, mm. almost like my son cannot show his quirks. You know, mm. cannot be this in the public. But I'm the opposite because I learn what is steaming to them. You know, flapping hands and mm -hmm. stuff like that. It's a form of regulation. Mm -hmm. It's an expression. It's a normal thing for them. It's a normal yeah. thing. And it's their coping mechanism. Yeah. So basically, when things get very hard for them, you know, sometimes we fidget or basically yeah. Yeah. we have coping mechanisms. It's their coping mechanism. Mm -mm. It's my how they got you. Bopping my leg. Yeah, right. she always bops That's a lot. So yeah. it's a form of steaming. <laughs> yeah. So uh, for kids with autism, they also steam. Mm -hmm. But they steam outwardly and also re repetitively. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I knew what all these things meant for them. And I like to learn from people with disabilities. I like to hear their perspective because mm. as adults, they yeah. will tell you, yeah. hey, this is this doesn't make me comfortable. Don't ask me this. Mm. Mm. Ask me this instead. Oh. So I love to learn from their perspective. So when you learn from their perspective, then you learn about their struggles. Then I learn about all the various therapies that are available out there. I really went wow. ahead. So that once I learn um, all these different th therapies, then I'm able to sort of cherry pick, hand pick here, hand pick here. Okay, this can suit my file. This can. so mm -hmm. then I can be better support him. Yeah. And only that, I, I'm able to understand him better. Yes. I understand him better, and then I can better support him. Give him the right kind of support. It's not <laughs> just about giving him support, but what kind the of support, support does yeah. he need? Mm -hmm. It's very specific to the child. Yeah. So when that happens, I was able to, for the first time ever in three years, my son did not. I could not bond with him. Oh. You know. I think as a mom, I struggled because uh, communication wasn't there. He didn't speak. Mm -hmm. um, his his uh, milestones are all delayed. Uh, so, he, so he walked slower and he steams a lot. And so then at one point, first my first born, at one point, he even like beat himself, beat me. Oh. Had because very he heavy meltdowns. Do yeah, because he couldn't communicate his needs. <clears throat> um, yeah, so when I started learning about how to actually... Uh, cope with him and everything. Then I started learning about this. Uh, um, it's called uh, Autism Speaks. Uh, no, 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 not Autism Speaks. Autism Speaks is a is a website that I don't like. Please, I don't <laughs> condone them. Um, but anyways, don't talk about that. Um, <laughs> no, uh, uh, Autism Language Launcher. That was the first book. Mm -hmm. um, so I read that book, and then that's where they talk about them joining. Joining, which I love because then when my uh, the the wrote about how, you know, in their world and their perspective, sometimes it's hard for them to connect with us. So mm -hmm. we have to find some moments to connect with them. Okay. He loved animals, so there was one point he was steaming at his elephants. <laughs> and he has never seen anyone steam, right? Because he's the only kid that uh, was steaming, yeah. like gag, mouth gag. Mm -hmm. um, that was when I realised, okay, I need to like go in right now. I need to show him. So I steam along with him. Oh. And my mom saw it. Like, for the first time ever, he stopped and he looked at me and he just hugged me. And he really oh. fell into an embrace with me. And I'm like, oh, finally, I, I, I feel like you are here. He sort of, oh, sure. I feel like he's telling me, I, you're here now. <laughs> you know? oh, finally, in his space. Yeah, in his <laughs> space. So I'm like, oh, okay. So we connected. And then I, I'm, I, I know then meltdowns are not a behavioral problem. Mm. It's a form of communication. Mm. You start to see their, their um, trigger points. Mm. What triggers them? What makes you upset? Mm. You start to see things in that perspective instead of like, oh my God, why are you giving me a heart? Why are you breaking mm. down? What, what mm. you know, you you don't do, I don't do that. I, I then understand that meltdowns are a form of communication mm -hmm. too. They're trying to tell you something. Mm -hmm. Something just happened. I'm very upset. 
But as his mummy, then as as he goes, I then understand environmental factors, things like that. What can trigger him? So before he gets triggered, I already knew. Okay, Farrell, this is going to be uncomfortable. How can I help you? Mm. Can we do something nice first? Things like that. So, um, yeah, structured schedule, English. routine, uh. written, visuals, and everything is really important. Wow. And my son and I bonded with books for the longest time. Mm. I started buying. I didn't buy a toy for him when he was pregnant. <laughs> anyway, I bought a book. It's okay. called On My Way to Jannah. Okay. Um, very nice book. <laughs> you should check it out. So I started to fill his corners with books. A lot of books on our prophets and yeah, a lot of wow. Islamic uh, children books. They are amazing because then I I relearn things mm-hmm. too. I'm yeah, like, yeah, wow, yeah. I didn't know that. And then <laughs> there's also this special book called My Special Angels, talking about the Kiraman Katibin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in the ch- in the children's form. Very oh. special book. Wow. So that was Farrell's favorite book. So we started bonding by books too. So he started mm. talking to me in books language also sometimes. Oh, people might so not cute. know, like people don't understand when mm. he's upset. So I'm feeling like Gretel the mem of, okay, he's anxious. Oh. I know. Oh, then so he that, started that spitting com- lines. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. he would start spitting Only lines. Only the parents will understand. Yeah. yeah. Then yeah. I'm like, uh, big, but from an outsider's point of view, they might be like, so what are you talking about? Yeah. But we knew. Yeah. It oh. was as simple as like that time. He couldn't tell us that he was tired. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't tell us. So he went to the father. He said, Spotify. Spotify? <laughs> Spotify. You remember oh, the yeah. audio? Yeah. He, okay. I, I am the sort like, you know, I would read books, for him books. Yeah. Daddy wants, you know, daddy's like, I'm not going to, I don't have time to read for your books, but I'm going to o- open audio books <laughs> on ah, Spotify. Okay. So before well. he sleeps, daddy <laughs> will sometimes open um, audio books. Ah, so okay. then that time, we wanted to go out. and But then he was like frantic, you know, like, he's not okay. So I'm like, well, what's wrong, Farrell? Are you okay? He's like, Spotify, Spotify. And then after that, I look at the daddy and daddy was like, what's happening? He, he just started crying and mm-hmm. lying himself on the floor. And then I look at it, I was like, Spotify. I said, hey, look at the time. It's his nap time. I think he's telling us he doesn't want to go. And daddy oh. was like, ah, okay. Spotify, audiobooks. Yeah, he's like, I started spitting he all listen his... listen to audiobooks when yeah. he sleeps. Oh. And he's yeah, like, like um, sorry. we're going on a bear hunt. He started spitting all the um, book titles. And the daddy was like, oh, and then daddy said, ah, oh, maybe. So true enough. So I, I, I cradled him, caught him inside the tent. So he fell asleep. <laughs> so we were like, okay, he's trying to tell us. So it's really important to bridge that communication gap with your child. Mm-hmm. But in order to do that, grieving process and the will to really want to learn. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What is my child experiencing? Why is he? They are not just acting out for no reason, mm. right? They're yes. not. There's always something. There's yeah. always trigger points. So in a way, as as parents, you know, you have to do your own due diligence in a way to, to learn about these conditions. You cannot just leave it to the experts. That's mm. true. Yes. I yeah. really agree because I would always tell people, um, you you, know, you might have to go beyond the doctor's diagnosis mm. because the doctor might give you a structured, your child needs this therapy, this therapy, this therapy, but it might not suit your child mm. because the spectrum mm. is so wide. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So no one child in, uh, in the, on the spectrum is the same as the next. Yeah. So okay. in that way, your doctor will give you a template thing. This yeah. is what is, that is, this is the best for your child. Mm. But mummies, that is, mummies especially, trust your instincts. Listen to it. You have to find out more because mm-hmm. no way, no way, one template can fit it all. Yeah. Yeah. They need a <coughs> specific thing. Yeah, even even for us uh, with no disabilities, in a way, we also have our own uh, forms of engagement. Correct. Everyone Correct. is different, yeah. right? So mm, to to, different. to paint the same <coughs> picture across, it's gonna be it's gonna be troublesome for for all of us. Yeah. So we have to do our due diligence. Do. Find out what's necessary. Metal. Uh, you know, like, like what Shaida mentioned, you have to really learn because uh, and she's going to be a student for the rest of her life, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a, and the thing is, autism, uh, just like us, Mm-mm. we change. Yeah. They change too. So what might work for my son when he was five might not work for now. Yeah. <laughs> it's different. <laughs> so then I have to go back to my books and go, okay, how best can I support you now, Farah? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, so yes, um, so you have to. I think that's my coping mechanism. I that's how I cope with it. That's how I dealt with um after that grieving process, that's how I dealt with it. Mm. Coming to acceptance and actually accepting his diagnosis. Yeah. yeah. This one oh. yeah. How 
Long, how old are your boys now? My first born is six. Six. Second born, Farel is six. Taika Hamza is four. four. Oh. And Bilal is three. Six, four, three. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So cute. And yeah, uh, does your first born know that? Did, did you tell him that we, we he is autistic? He just, yeah. I just told him that he is autistic. Before we get to that, mm. How how uh, do these children um, do they actually feel like they are different from others or to them it's like normal? Mm. That's, That's a very good question. Mm-hmm. Um, I think because Farrell is six, mm-hmm. so I don't know for sure if he really truly feels different. Okay, but if you look at the adults with autism, they will say that through their years they feel very odd. They feel uh, like the odd one out. They mm. feel like they never belong. Mm-mm. It's very different. Only from then them. they can tell. Only then they can sort yeah. of tell because I think. Mm. One thing about people with autism also, some of them on the spectrum, it's hard for them to read cues, social, yeah, cues. social cues. It's social not cues. easy for them. Mm-hmm. So they can't understand sarcasm. Farrell, our Farrell is so pure and innocent and, they and are gentle. So honest. They are so honest, honest so which honest. is a great thing, but also not so good thing <laughs> because he will be like going inside the taxi like, what? Something stinks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Something smells bad. Look at me like, Abby, what is the smell of this taxi? You're like... <laughs> 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 he will tell that. you when the food is not nice you know it's uh, like yeah or the other day I drew a charizard and he's like <laughs> he's staring at it and he's like mm. the eyes look sad I don't like it <laughs> <laughs> or he went out from school that time mm. poor child there was one very nice friend drew him a T-Rex he loves dinosaurs and mm. now Pokemon um, drew him a T-Rex and he's like oh my god Le- Natalia drew me a T-Rex it's so weird <laughs> mm. It looks so bad, but it's just him being honest. Yeah. He yeah. doesn't know how to lie, so <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing. But also, like, so I have right. to always tell him, like, inner thoughts. Mm. Remember, I told you inner thoughts. Mm-hmm. Um, it's okay. It's great that you have opinions, but um, be gentle with your words. Mm. You know, it's maybe a, you can say, mind, yeah. "I don't." Um, it looks nice. Thank you. I say always. Always say thank you first, because the other day when the Charizard thing happened, the <laughs> eyes was sad to him. <laughs> I said to him, "Can uh, you know next time, Farrell? Do you think you could, you know, tell me, um, thank you for drawing for me, Ami? Um, but the eyes kind of look not so nice. Do you think you can change this for me?" I said, mm. "Which one sounds nicer, Farrell?" Can yeah. you teach him the cues. In the yes, uh-huh. uh, because. Kids <coughs> learn by modeling you. Yeah. They are the mirror. And kids model after they are. Mm. So they much. are your mirror. So I always tell myself that that's one of the guidelines of me parenting them. I always remember that they will mirror everything how I react. Mm-hmm. They could, yeah, to a situation. Especially, I think the most pivotal point of parenting is, especially when they make a mistake. Mm. I always hold my husband back sometimes when he was about to, you know, get yeah, angry. angry. I will look at him <laughs> and I said, okay, how you react now to them making a mistake will impact them when they are older. It, yeah. it will help. We will shape Then we them. go like, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, Farrell. <laughs> <laughs> <Mashallah. laughs> how yeah. was it like, um, I've told that, uh, back to that question. So how, how did you tell him that, um, you know, for yeah. Farrell? Yeah. Okay. So what I started noticing was Farrell was having difficulty coping with numeracy. He's a literacy kind of guy. Mm. Very good with his language. But he would tell me things like, um, my brain is not letting me do numeracy today. It's oh. not working. <laughs> wow. yes. yes, they would tell you that. Uh, he, he would say that my legs won't let me walk today. I'm tired. Um, yeah. oh. He wouldn't say I'm tired, but he would say my legs are not letting me walk today. So he would tell me things like, my brain is not letting me do numeracy. So I've noticed he struggled. He couldn't write as well as his other one. So that one time he struggled, he started crying very badly when we were trying to do numeracy. And then it was not until he brought back his spelling book. Um, and he's a perfectionist to everything. So I was like, okay, so how did spelling go? And, and he's like, he was afraid to show me. So that's why I'm like, okay, Why? Then I'm like, huh? That was like introspective. I said, okay, that, no, you you shouldn't be afraid to show me. Mm-mm. So I, I tried to tell him like, oh, okay, it's okay. You don't want to show me now, it's fine. But I looked through his book. He got everything, almost everything wrong. Okay. So he was perfect. I, I started noticing he was starting to be, he was like, you know, my, my friends can write. I cannot mm. write. I'm the only one who cannot write. Things like that. So he started feeling pressured from, from the whole school mm. and thinking that, okay, I cannot do it. I cannot do it. It's too hard. So mm. I had tried to change his perception slowly. I said, it's not that it's hard. You just haven't learned it yet. Mm. So I introduced him to the word yet. 
I always tell him that effort is success. I just need you to try. You don't Easy. need perfect. I don't need you to be perfect. It's mm. okay. It's fine. You get 10 wrong. You won't always get 10 wrong. But you need to go through that mistake. Wow. Right? So I always tell these conversations with Farrell. And then I noticed he was just struggling a lot with that. And mm. then that's when I know that through his diagnosis and through his um, ADOS testing, they also told us that he also has this processing um, he's slower in processing mm. things sometimes, so he needs time. Um, uh, yeah, but Farrell, mashallah. So um, I told myself, okay, you know what? I think we always had this talk. When do we tell him? How do we tell him? But we knew that I definitely want to tell my son that he is autistic at some point. I, I don't want him to hear it from another person. I don't want him to find out <coughs> himself. I want to be able to tell him that, hey, this is your condition. And I think I always wanted to instill the awareness in him mm -mm. so that he is able to learn how to cope with his struggles. Mm -mm. Then he can be kinder to himself, mm -hmm. right? Like, hey, it's not that you cannot or you don't. It is your brain. It's, the, it's a neurological thing. Mm -hmm. so it's the way your brain works, yeah. Farrell. It's different. It's not that you can't do it. Mm -mm. It's different. So that's <coughs> when I, I looked at him and I said, I told I told my, my husband briefly, I said, hey, mm, the moment he can comprehend, right? We're going to tell him that he said, yeah. Do you think six is too early? <laughs> I said, hmm. Then he's like, I'm I'm all for it. If you need, if you feel like this is the time, then this is time. So not until that that the next day he came out and he started buttoning his own shirt, oh. combing his own head. I'm like, oh my god, he's really grown. Six year old boy. So I looked at him. <laughs> I said, okay, this is the time. Mm -mm. I told him, hey, Farrell. Um, so I approached this matter by this at their at their room in their room they have a. Uh, Two, two picture frame. One of the picture frame it says, um, Taki Watanga. It's a Maori word for autism that means at your own pace and space. I really wow. love pace. At your own pace and, and, space. and space. So I told myself, okay, um, I think this is how I'm going to approach it. So I, I looked at him and I said, Farrell, Ami's going to teach you a very important word today. It is very dear to Ami. It's called Takiwatanga. I said, can you repeat it after me? So he said, Takiwatanga. I said, yes, Takiwatanga. It's the Maori word for autism. It's what you have. And it means at your own pace and space. That's what your autism means to Ami. You know? mm. So he had a time to just process, okay. Autistic. I said, yes. Remember. And I have books on autism mm -mm. on his bookshelf. I have a lot of kids' books on differences and everything. Just Ask, this book called Just Us, Multiple mm -hmm. Disability mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Just to get an awareness out. Um, so, yeah. So, that's when I, I looked at him and I said, yeah. So, the next day, <laughs> uh, whenever he struggles, um, I would look at him and I said, remember Takiwa Tanga? And he would say, at my own pace and space. Oh, yeah, exactly. Oh, my goodness. I said, wow. exactly, at your own pace and space. No rush. I'm not rushing you. Nobody's going to rush you. Mm. You take your time. Wow. Yeah. And then he's calm. Should tell them about the book. Okay. Yeah, so the then <coughs> a few days after, he had an assignment to do. Mm. Okay. So he's trying to grab the Takiwatanga thing, right? Mm -mm. A few days after, he has this book assignment. It's called a book commercial. <laughs> so he's supposed to do a book commercial on, of course, pre-existing book. But my mm -hmm. Farrell being my Farrell, he came home and said, Ami, I want to write on a book that I wrote myself. I want to write a book and let's do a book commercial on it. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> but Farrell, I'm like, you have tons of, of books. books. <laughs> <laughs> I bought you books from when you were in my tummy. <laughs> I still have them. Like, pick one. Ooh. Oh, sorry. Uh, so cute. Mama is calling. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Mashallah. Okay, that's good. Bidudu. Sorry. Sorry, okay. Mama. <laughs> okay. I'll call you back, Mama. Okay. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Book, book, book. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I was like, Farrell, just pick a book. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no. I want to, you know, then not until I... I, I uh, and. Being a, a parents with special needs, you also have meetings with epic teachers. I'm pretty sure you guys know. So I had uh, a meeting with his epic teacher, his pet teacher. And I was telling him, oh my God, and he wants me to write this book now for a book commercial. <laughs> and she looks at me and she said, oh, why not? I looked at him and I said, okay, um, let's write a book. But his condition was only two things. Okay, I mean, I want a T-Rex and also a Charizard. Okay. <laughs> and he went to sleep. 
So uh, the mummy was up at eight, eight, at eight from eight. I was like, what? What do I write? Because <laughs> the book commercial was tomorrow. He has to do a show and tell. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what do I write? So uh, I really stayed up. I think at maybe about two, three a.m. in the morning. I I was like, oh, I remembered his classmate, one of the parent meet sessions like one of the parent involved sessions mm-hmm. i was inside and i remember the friend came to me and said viral really like dinosaurs <laughs> <laughs> everything is dinosaur 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 <laughs> why does he always like dinosaurs you know the obsession and that dinosaurs. was the spark i was like huh a six-year-old is asking me why does he need his dinosaurs and there's a reason for that so i was like huh maybe i write about his autism so I started writing. Um, Hi, my name is Farrell. I am six years old and I am autistic. Then I started writing the book and it's in a form of why he needs it. I need a clear schedule and oh. my dinosaur. And my, you might be wondering why I have my T-Rex all the time. Mm. It's uh, a coping mechanism for me. It's my calming tool. So I use all these words, calming mm-hmm. tool. Mm. Um, schedule is important for me. I like predictability, things like that. So I ended with like, you know, I uh, um, I think, yeah, I forgot what was the ending, but I said something like, um, just like how Ami and Abi is proud of. Oh yeah, my, my Ami always tells me that I'm extraordinary. Oh. Um, uh, and uh, that they are so proud of me, something like that last. I was talking about that. So I ended with that, I reminded him that we are so proud. But then, so wow. I closed the book. I, I showed daddy, daddy read the book and he, and I wrote, had images. So it was oh. image of a small boy with, like him <laughs> and with his Charizard and the next page is like a clock picture and like his, his school bag. So image you know, like it's that. him, oh. it's him wow. in visual. So he read and he started tearing. He's like, oh, I think you should publish this someday. I said, <laughs> hmm, I don't know. Why not? <laughs> but in that morning, Mm-mm. he got up. He saw the book. He's like, ah, you know. And so the title was, Hi, my name is Farrell. Um, then he opened the book. He started reading. He was like, hi, my name is Farrell. I am six years old and I have autism. And I just bawled. Oh. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, that's the first time I hear my son saying he is autistic. I went to the toilet. I started crying. And because then I felt that it was a vulnerable point. All, your, all his six years of life is people mm. discussing his autism and hearing like uh, the doctor said autistic or the, the, the epic teacher said autistic. We are always talking about it, mm. autism, autism. But it's the first time he said, I am six years old and I have autism. And uh, yeah, then when he started reading that book, he sort of also understood why oh. scheduling, why do I need schedule? Huh, it makes sense, Amir. Yeah. And then so... Th- it was a very beautiful thing because I was like, ah, why didn't I think about it before? Books are always his thing. Mm-hmm. Books is our thing. It's yeah. our communication. So then I thought, ah, oh, maybe this is how I should move on with things. If things get hard, I'll probably write to him things. So mm-hmm. I, I, I wrote to him and, and then that's when he, the next few days, it was amazing. You see something amazing happen where he just goes to me. He's like, um, I mean, I need my Charizard. It's my calming tool. Oh, I need wow. to, I need a moment. Wow. Right, and I understood him. I mean, yeah, so changes are very hard for him. Mm. Yeah. So in a way, when when you give this, um, what is it? Give this uh, names to him, like coming to the like, he uses it after that. Yes. So then he, he sort of understands. Oh yeah, uh-huh. I need this. Mm. Wow. I need this because this helps me cope with things that are uncomfortable for right. me. So in wow. a crowd, before he needs to do anything, I'm like, okay, it's a tough day today. Mm-hmm. Okay, he will look at his schedule and I will tell him he needs a schedule. Well, so he needs to know what's going to happen through the day. They well, like predictability, basically. And, and a plan, plan, day, and basically. A plan day, yeah. 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 So they like predictability. So I would write to him, number one, this is what we're doing, number two, number three. So anything uncomfortable, any changes, mm-hmm. I would have to write it down for him. And yeah, that's where that's how he learned to also anticipate and uh. hope. Mm-hmm. So that's when he will know, okay, this is uncomfortable for me. Ami, I need more time. Mm. I need space. So he's using words like that. Because I will always redirect him. Sometimes he would come out from school and you know, I don't want to play with this boy. <laughs> then I would be like, don't say that. <laughs> As I say, you need space. <coughs> Can I have some time? I'll play with you later. Mm-mm. You know, yeah. So I will, I will oh. have to rephrase that. But yeah, He's so learning. he it's beautiful because then he read, then he understood. Mm-hmm. Oh, why do I need? Oh, yeah, it makes sense. I think it makes sense to him enough that he will tell me like mm. it's my calming tool, Ami. Okay, then wow. yeah, yeah, okay. 
uh, are his uh, are his friends also the same? Or his fr- he's in the mainstream school. Oh, yeah. oh my sure. God. Plus, um, he's in a very good school. Uh, this is his third school, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I pulled yeah. him out from the first two schools. And uh, I finally met a teacher that shares the same values as me. Mm. Because they also have... He has a, another classmate. The first time, actually. I always talk to me. I think more than half a dozen of schools. Uh, more than dozens of school and God knows how, how many schools I called up. Mm. Um, but uh, one of the reasons that they reject Farrell is also because, you know, in these schools, they will tell you that, uh, oh, because we already have one kid with autism. But this is the first school. Um, he has an autistic classmate also. Mm. So there's 28 of them. It's a large class. So, But she have to, uh, with uh, uh, Farrell and also another yeah. another um, girl with autism. Wow. But they, they took her in. And it's simply with this belief, I noticed what's different with teacher Rose is that she has this firm belief that every kid can. That changes everything. Every kid every can. I noticed can. that. Yeah, because she always say, he can. He will always look at Farrell when it's tough. He's like, uh, she will look at Farrell. She's like, you can do it, Farrell. Mm-mm. Yeah. So she instilled a lot of independence in Farrell. We, we notice changes. When he's really independent these days. Because mm. teacher Rose always go like, and she and the thing about teacher Rose, she's not bothered if like I. She always tell me like, okay, academics can come in. He can, yeah. you know. And he's he's got a good support system. His DS plus teacher would tell me, he can learn at any point of his life. It doesn't have to be now. But right now, what is the long term goal? Shall we focus? What is your focus? What is your aim for him? And I would always say social skills. So teacher Rose is on the same power with us. She's like. Wow. Um, spelling is because mommy's requested us to do this. This is not part of our <laughs> curriculum because they wanted their kids to, you know, enter primary school knowing how to spell, uh. things like that. So she's always like, oh, but I'm not bothered with it. Like, <laughs> if Farah ca- is really okay. And she is so amazing. Like, his book, right? She will always give him a stamp. She, he always has a stamp. Right? Great job. Great effort. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> it's like a yeah. reminder for him. <laughs> yeah, so teacher Rose, I realized then, I look at the guy I said, you know, a lot of schools that rejected him also say things like, my teachers are not trained. Mm. That's why we can't take him. Um, but then I looked at uh, at my husband and said, teacher Rose is not trained. But, she but she's doing this with heart. It's her intention. Mm. Yeah. Why do you? What's your purpose in being a teacher? Mm. If you truly want to teach, mm. would you shut your door on a kid with disability? Wow. Right? So teacher Rose, I realized she really just believe every kid can. I can. He can. She's a very rugged teacher. She's so cool. <laughs> the cool we need one, more teacher roles. We need teacher more teacher roles. <laughs> teacher Rose, I can go on with <laughs> I am very... I remember yeah. telling you like during the process of us finding the school, like I don't <laughs> care how the principal is. I just want to meet the teacher. <laughs> just because yeah, at the end of the day, like what Shaida says is the intention and, yeah, and the uh, of you being an educator. Do you really want to help kids? Do you really want to teach kids in whatever forms they come? Mm. Yeah, you know, mm. And... Yeah, if, through the process of us going through the schools, you can really see who who who's is a dedicated teacher and who's not. Uh, yeah, who's in it for the money. Yeah, 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 yeah. it's not easy. It's okay. a very difficult okay. process, but yeah. Wow, but how? What would you say? Um, okay, we we talk about in general in terms of. I mean, you met. Uh, there's other parents who have autistic kids as well that you have met, right? So in general, what is this misconception that other parents have towards? Children with autism. That Misconception. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Um, <coughs> I always, I think by definition, autism is a neurological thing. Mm-hmm. But I see a lot of parents, even in the support needs group, but this is in no way of me saying that they are not doing their job whatsoever. The beautiful thing is, even when they are doing something, trying to send their child to this therapy that I don't agree with, but that's their effort, Mm-mm. right? They yeah. are putting in effort that this is the best for my child for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, I wouldn't, you know, condemn and say, oh, you cannot do this. But what I notice with the community, there's a lot of them that's trying to, it's they think it's a behavioral thing. Behavioral. You get what I mean? Yeah. Like, Not they kind. always feel much, yeah, they always yeah. feel much, um, how do I change this? Mm. You know, mm. the question is always like, how do I change this? But you're not thinking about um, what is the issue here? Can this even be cured? Mm-hmm. You know, they always, there's, there's a lot of misconception like, okay, maybe, you know, if I forced him enough in a box, then 
he would mm. eventually be normal and mm. act normal and maybe all these things would dissipate. And I stuff guess there's like that, that society pressure also. Is the society mm. pressure? So I don't blame like, the parents yeah. because there's a society pressure also. Um, with Bilal, for example, I, I pulled him out from his epic school because <laughs> his therapist, uh, one of the goals that they set for Bilal, and my Bilal has the, all the multiple conditions, yeah. right? And one of the one of the uh, goals for them is um, to stop Bilal from steaming. Um, we get him to tap on uh, the uh, tap on the pillow or tap on his um, thighs because instead. Because we bring pillow every day. <laughs> 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 or tap on his thighs instead of flapping his hands. So I told them, huh, why is this a goal? Mm. You know. And then they said, oh, uh, because uh, yeah, it's socially inappropriate. And this is it was like it's epic. epic. Oh. Okay. Early intervention program. The, oh. the father just went, oh my god, wrong mother, wrong mother. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? I was like, then I went on, like, do you know what steaming is to them? It's a form of regulation. Yeah. Do you know that adults with autism and they don't get to steam, they are depressive. Mm. It's a form of expression. So I just asked ask them one simple question. I said, if a neurotypical kid can flap their hands when they're at, in joy, mm. eh, no, can a neurotypical kid can clap their hands when they're happy, why can't my son flap his hands when he's happy? He's wow. just showing you that he's, he's happy now. Yeah. It's just, so mm. I'm like, who is his, he disturbing again? What society? If you are yeah. not comfortable with how my child is acting, then look away. But you don't tell my child to change. Yeah. I don't feel like it. Wrong mother, wrong mother, wrong mother. Wrong mother. They're trying to put their, like in a way, they're saying that society is supposed to behave this way. Correct. But right? so, so interestingly yeah. enough, the epic teacher told me that, oh, because parents send their kids here to change all these things. To become what society change, wants them yeah, to be. Yeah, they said to change all these oh. things because they would say it's socially inappropriate mm. when, you know, they are eating with their dinner with their family. I don't want my child to be like this, so change this. I want, oh. yeah. Oh, so like, they like say, boot camp like that. So oh so so this is this is from an epic yeah. teacher perspective. She okay. told me that, but oh, wow. because a lot of parents, when they send their child here, they want us to change all these things. But it's about it's not not me. Mm. Then they say, oh, you're a rare mom. <laughs> 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 rare, rare. So I think when rare. we talk about <laughs> what's the misconception, I think sometimes like um, I spoke to another mom with a kid with autism. I could only gel with her. Mashallah, Demi, she's amazing. She uh, we spoke to each other and we said, you know. What I realize is I'm, I'm sticking out like an oddball here in the support <laughs> group because they're all obsessed with fixing their kid. But the thing is, your child is not broken. Yeah. So I think there's this misconception. like you need to really learn about what it is. Mm. You know, it's not something like... I always tell people it's as simple as you don't try to fit a triangle into a square box. Yeah. It will never change. Yes. Yes. So that's uh, yeah. those are one of the misconceptions. I feel like it's again, it's a behavior thing. I think it thing. all boils down again to perspective. Mm -hmm. Like, mm. Um, how do you view um, Aut your autism? Mm. Um, either you try to fix him or you embrace him. Yeah, yeah. And mommy is doing a great job embracing. Uh, all these little things. You are too. So I was right. <laughs> <laughs> I was right. No, you are too. I would say that Debbie's <coughs> support is really important because mm -hmm. he really trusts me in the process of, okay, he's, he's always, whenever My go-to answer doubts, is always like, what does your mother is thinking? Yeah, she always like, wow. What, the, what do you think? Mm -hmm. You know, and that, that's always going to align back to me. I make very tough decisions where I go like, I know you're an epic school, mm -hmm. but because you're an epic school, is it right to still send my son to a therapist that believes that this is not okay? Mm -hmm. Because societal, society is so, socially is inappropriate. I'm like, no, I, I told him, I said, I'm sorry, but I'm going to pull him out from this epic center. I'm going to find another epic center. Mm -hmm. So it happened with Pharrell too. I make a, a, yeah, because even in the society, for example, even in school choosing process, mm -hmm. right, I was hitting like a, so many doors shut by because I'm so transparent. Mm. Mm -hmm. I would tell them, them, "Hey, okay, my son, uh, do you have a s you know a space in your s do you have a space in your uh, on 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 your cohort right now? Can my child go in? Things like that. Mm. Do you have a slot? Because you know, but then they would they would tell me, "Oh, okay, yeah, we do have spots and stuff like that." But the minute I said, "Okay, so he is five and he has autism." 
and he's it, autism. This is his strength. This is soon. I'm very transparent. Mm-hmm. If he goes on a meltdown, this is what he can do. I will discuss it extensively. So a lot of doors were shut because of that. Because I'm very transparent. I'm like he's autistic. That's when they're like, oh, okay, oh, we are not trained to take that. You know, mm-hmm. I have million and one. There's a long list of things that they would tell me. Mm-hmm. So that's when um, uh, I go into the parents' support need group. You know, I was like super depressed at one point. I was like, mommies, how do you find schools for your kids? I didn't know even an education system. Like being able to learn is a privilege. For it's a privilege. You know, wow. that you don't, you know, sometimes you forsake it, you don't even realize. Yeah. So I was like, how do you put your child to through school? Like, what schools? Do you have any schools to recommend? And I was very shocked. 90% of them, I think 99% of them, they were telling me, don't tell them. Don't tell, Ooh, the don't teachers tell that them that they is. are autistic. You just put them through only. So if ah. anything happened, they will just change to another school. Oh. That kind of thing. Oh, wow. They oh. won't tell the teacher. They don't tell. If you tell, it's complicated, right? You don't tell. You just put them there. But for me, it's unfair. Mm. It's unfair mm-hmm. for my child. It's unfair for the educators. I have high respect for educators. Mm. If they're going to be in a class of 40, of 28, of 5 even, and you're not going to tell them my child's needs, yeah. it's not fair for them. They will be like, they how do I handle this? Yeah. Yeah. You know, if something happens, mm. you'll mm. never know, right? If something happens, then they'll be like, oh. Do I cope with it? I don't think it's fair for the for the school, for the educators, for the and teachers. And it's not fair for my son because yeah. he's not going to be able to cope with it. He's not going to yeah. be able to yeah. understand because people don't understand him. Yeah. Right. It's, it's because it's yeah. a whole different ballgame. Correct. Uh, dealing with um, normal. They need like, some yeah. they need some um environmental factors that yeah. has played in. So like, like you mentioned, um Farrell would require Strategies, the yeah. uh, planning, and all that. So okay. Clear schedule. Yeah, if you don't, you don't uh, preempt the educators about this. Right. They just put him in with the rest. Yeah, and all the changes and in the day, he's right? Gonna <laughs> down, uh, yeah, on, yeah on imagine yeah. in in a school day, you know, there's a lot of changes. Why, if this school, uh, you know, like simple things, uh, um, teacher is on leave. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I would tell them, uh, tell me if your teachers are on leave, so that I can preempt him. Hey, Farrell, it's going to be a new teacher coming in. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. going to be teacher Vanessa uh, So he needs to know Oh okay So so then he, he has time to process it oh, Okay so it's not teacher Rose today Because changes scares them It's hard for them to go through changes They mm-hmm. need a sense of predictability Which is why Farrell loves his T-Rex and his Charizard It's a calming tool Come. And also yeah. something that is it's a constant, call, it's a constant for yeah. him he knows that okay when yeah. he, I need, it's hard for me to cope I need something constant Changes are hard There's so always a reason like, must say right, like people can deem it very easily as an obsession, but uh, there's mm. always a reason. We don't for it, view right? it as yeah. obsession yeah. to perspective. Yeah, perspective. Yeah. That's his coping it. mechanism. Mm-hmm. I'd be like, I always see that um, all these things that they like and stuff like that. It's 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 strength. It's their strengths and it's their core. It's their DNA. Mm-hmm. It's their identity. Once you embrace their identity, that's when you start believing in them, and then they believe in themselves. And then you see them just really thriving and being at their own pace and space where mm. they know that mommy knows this mm. is my needs and mm. she's providing me that space and setting this area where this is the teachers that I trust and I know that they will care for you well because they know mm. they know this is what makes this right so for me yeah so when you talk about this concept, yeah, I, I know of a lot of parents who will do that they won't talk about their children's diagnosis crazily enough even in NUS some kids with autism, and, and yes, only the parent, the parents know that he is autistic, and there will be professors who would say, "Can I have not? Uh, can I not have student A inside my lecture room? It won't yes. affect my grade. Can I just not have student A? It's hard to deal with. My God. Wow. Or there's a lot like the the classmates won't want to group with him, mm. just because he's autistic. because he's, but they don't know oh. because the parents refuse to tell them. Right, um, right. And even in NUS, can you imagine? So for me, it's like. That's why I'm very pro, like, I feel like it's important to instill awareness in yourself and your child. Mm -hmm. So he grew up knowing, hey, this is my premises. This is what I can do. I need things. I can do this, but Mm. I need a longer time. Mm. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, there's this one question. How do you handle the, it says, tantrum of your child? Oh. Yeah. Oh, uh, patience. <laughs> patience. Patience. Lots of, lots of patience. <laughs> <laughs> really, it boils down to patience. Like, your child, when he goes through a tantrum, isn't for, you know, like, in anything. Like, there must be a reason why. Mm-mm. Like, sometimes some autistic kids, like, after a day of, they call it masking. Mm-mm. Like, they have to go yeah. through schools. 
like they have yeah. to mask themselves and not like portray out their inner feelings. Yeah. So at the end of the day, they go through this meltdown or just outbursts. Mm-hmm. Just yeah. they After feel cool, they very, school, right? very tired even mentally exhausted. Yeah. So um, really a lot of patience and just um, communication with them, like what Shaida says, reaching a communication with them and finding out what's, what's, what's the matter. Mm-hmm. And in a two-way, like with me and Shaida, it's also really important, like, because we are human at the end of the day. Yes. We all have our limits as parents. Like, mm-hmm. There are, I, w- I won't, uh, I mean, I won't lie, la, like there are moments where like it reached That's to right. my threshold and uh, I'm almost about to flip. But the the relationship that me and Shaida have, like we always remind each other that if we come to that point that we are going to lose it, like simply as the tech you know, mm. yeah, swap places. Okay. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I cannot, um, I cannot handle this at the moment. Like, I need your help to come in, and just um, control the situation and ease the situation. Mm. Yeah, and that's what we. Yeah, I think do. it's really important to understand they are going through a hard time. Mm. As much as it is hard for you to go through it, it's harder for them. Yeah. Right. Wow. They are feeling it. They are feeling all these yeah. emotions. Yeah. So I always go back to uh, I need to ca- become myself in order for them to become. Mm-hmm. So I need to calm myself down first. So it's like a co-regulation. I practice a lot of co-regulation. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we regulate these emotions of yours together. together. I give him space. I give him time. Do you need time for her? He's, he's crying and he's throwing a tantrum. I always remind myself, hey, yes, heart for you. Eyes are looking. Don't focus on the eyes. Look at him. Mm-hmm. Focus on what's important. It's right in front mm-hmm. of you. Then you just be in a moment with them. They need to know that. Yeah. That's how. And again, with the mirror thing, Mm-mm. when they are distraught, we all have bad days. Also, remind yourself: don't be so hard on them because we have our bad days too. Yeah. Why are we so hard on kids? Because they are kids. They can't even compartmentalize their thoughts, their right. emotions, what they are going through. Mm-hmm. How do I deal with anger? But if we don't show them in those moments how to deal with it with patience with gentleness, with kindness, giving him space to feel it all. It's okay, feel it. Mm-hmm. Fine. You're, you're sad, cry. You, know, you need to vent it out, vent it out. It's okay. Mm. When you're ready, we'll talk about it. I don't it's especially hard for parents, I think, I feel like, when it's in public. Right. Yeah. Mm, no, uh, yeah. The pressure from society, eyes pressure. are looking. Yeah. I think it's you the know? pressure. Like. Then you like start just feeling much. Mm. You just anxiety. quiet, yeah. quiet. No, you don't. Mm. I've seen that happening, right? But like for me, I always train myself to take a step back and go like, hey, I need to be calm. They are looking at me. If, if they can't feel my calm, then it won't happen. So I regulate yeah. with them. Okay. It's and so I funny, you see space. one autistic kid sitting down with the I will sit, down yeah, yeah, the I will husband. sit with like, them. I will I be also it. sitting down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the brother, correct. the brother, alhamdulillah, is like also very patient. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, Mashallah, yeah. Because very patient with the brother. <laughs> I yeah. remember my mom, the first time, that time he had a meltdown at the library. Uh, oh. Right before entering the library. Mm. So okay. it was at Civic Centre. It was the busy, you know, Civic Centre. Civic Centre, yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. He just had a meltdown and he just sat down. And I sat down with him. I just sit beside him. My mom was like, shut up. <laughs> like you diri lah tak apalah yeah, yeah. just angkat dia tunjukkan video saya no 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 mm-hmm. I don't believe in that yeah, I'm gonna like it's okay it's okay I don't want him to also feel isolated in these feelings mm-hmm. you're sitting down I'll sit down with you I'm here when you're ready we'll talk about it it's mm-hmm. fine so yeah. my mom was <laughs> Oh, okay, like this. <laughs> yeah so you will see me literally I will, if he's sitting down I'll sit down mm-hmm. with him yeah, even though it's a foreign place and things, you know, whatever he's doing, I'll just do it with him. And I go like, okay. So the, And the thing is, they're not going to be on a, a hundred all the time. Mm-mm. They're going to come down. There will be uh, the, the wind down period for yeah, that. So there's a lot of like, uh, sometimes I try to embrace and just go, it's fine, it's okay, let it all out. Mm. Sometimes it's really giving him space, knowing that he's, he's pushing Mm-mm. me, that's okay, he needs space. Mm-hmm. But I let him, I let them go through the meltdown. I it's really more. perspective, I think. Yeah. Okay. Wow. I think what, whatever they said just now is also kind of like advice for parents mm-hmm. who are still trying to... Understand. Yeah, understand the, the kid and how to handle certain situations, mm-hmm. right? Oh, okay. and all uh. remember one thing. Mm-hmm. Allah specifically gave that child to you. So mm-hmm. he knows that you are capable of it. Even if and you think you can't. Yeah, even mm. if you think you can't. Like, who are we to question him? Yeah. 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 Just think about mean. it. Like, every f- uh, long before you were made, your child's name 
He's already beside you. Yeah. So uh, and my name also inside your heart. Ah. Ah. Oh. Always, always. <laughs> so he has. So bad. It's a lie. Yes, because I, I always tell people that, like, remember, I know it's tough, but um, every part of your child, their traits or whatsoever, is meant to fit yours. Because mm-hmm. you were destined to be their mother and father. <coughs> so, wow. you think you can't, but you can. You can. Amazing. Amazing. If there's one thing you one thing one thing okay. you would like to um, let others know, those who are not aware of what autism is. What is that one thing you want to share for them to realize what this mm. is? Especially when they meet your children and when they want to mingle with your children. What is one thing you want to share with them? Why do you, you go first? Yeah. You. <laughs> you <have laughs> say. Uh, one thing I would want them to know. Mm. Mm, I think really, uh, I realize this with people whenever they want to come and we barely have play dates or people asking us oh. for play dates. But anyways, if there's um, people, when people come to our house, there's always this tension like, how do I? Mm. How do you I move know? About? Yeah, but you can sense it from yeah. them. The, the child can sense it even more. Mm. And oh, okay. um, I always tell people like, I just play with them. Know that they are actually just human. Um, my child is like any other six-year-old where he wants to play. Uh, mm. So just play with him. He mm. plays differently, but... Um, try your best to also not like you know be bogged down by that. Um, yeah. So the sticks. So what do I do? Right. <laughs> you know, okay. don't, don't right. be bogged down. Try to just really. He's a kid. He's mm-hmm. he's like any other kid. Mm-hmm. Uh, not so scary actually. He's really like any other kid. So just play. They love to play. Just play. So I really wish people just could play think. Yeah, they play differently. So I I wish people could like maybe really understand that you know. Um, they are not scary. They are not weird or odd. Or yeah, um, they're really like any other it's one of true. us who's trying to get oh. around to spaces and places, and they just want to play. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that's, that's one nice. thing. Amazing. Mm-hmm. Sure, yeah. Melanie, same. Senang aja kau. Okay. Honestly, I had mine also. Oh. Uh, uh, they are they're human after all. I mean, just get to know them. Mm-hmm. You know, don't be so quick to judge. Yeah, that's, that's important. Yeah. So, because like we say, we wanted to raise awareness yes. about what autism really is, yes. and like what uh, Felani and Chida has shared that they are all children as well. They are all also they have their own characteristics. I wanna I wanna mm. ask one question as well. All, huh? all your three sons, right? They're special. What are each of their gifts that you think their strengths? Mm. Yeah. Oh. You wanna go? Mm, meaning each of them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Farrell's strength. Farrell's, okay, Farrell mirrors very closely like the mother. <laughs> <laughs> so I must say his gift is always his tenderness and his loving and his empathy towards someone. He can he can cry over the most smallest thing. He's oh. gentle. He's very, very gentle. So he models he loves animals. Home. Yeah. He can't see. He can't see things. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, he's very gentle. He's very gentle. gentle. Say, that's one of his. Oh. He feels for someone. Wow. Mm. Yeah. You would think, if oh, you that's see another it, yeah, misconception. Very, yeah, but that's another misconception. People think that autistic people do don't really feel, can't really uh-huh. feel. Mm. Yeah, they can. They, they can. can really sense and they can even feel. I would challenge that they might feel like more. Sometimes out of the blue, like if he sees the mother from afar, like. Not okay. Then he can. He will just go up to mom and just just hug. Me. Just hug Shada. Oh. Oh. Yeah, so I love Aaron's you. so sweet. Yeah. So sweet. He's very sweet. sweet and that I must yeah. say. Yeah. That is just. I, I I will. Oh, right, yeah. And then recently because he started writing again. Um. Started writing. So. Uh. I used to write notes to him. I always write notes to him. Um. Mm. Every lunchbox. Oh. Hi, Farrell. Um, I pack extra biscuits for you. Share this with your friends. Hi, Farrell. Remember to be kind. So I always write notes mm-hmm. for different things. I say, hi, Farrell. I'm so proud of you. I love you. Things like that. So mm-hmm. I don't realize it, but he does it to me now. He will write notes to me oh. now. <laughs> I love Ami. Yeah, so wow. it's very nice. Oh, he, so he will. He was, yeah, so he's very gentle. And one clear example also um, was that time we had a very nice day. 
I um, that day no, was weird. I was like no holes boy. I was like okay, let's just do it. You want to go time zone? Sure. Let's <laughs> let's get overstimulated with the lights <laughs> and everything. Let's go. And then so we went through the whole day. We had fun. So I before I tuck him to sleep, my children tuck him to sleep. I was like ah, oh, Taika Farah, what's the best part of the day? You know, like Farah, what's the best part of the day? And he said ah, oh, hugs, and hugs. After your everything. hug after time zone yeah is <laughs> your like, hug was the your best. hug I'm like my hug is like yeah, yeah. wow <laughs> yeah. that's yeah. so sweet that is my Mashallah. part so that's one misconception they feel tender. they're very gentle um, wow, well, yeah. Taika 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 is the joy I, yeah Taika I must say his strength is the, his joy his and his whimsiness. His you. He is uh, he's a mirror <laughs> of me. <laughs> you see all my jokes, and that's how my son is. He's funny. Oh, wow. He's, he's funny. our funny he's, face. Yeah, so when goodness. things get tense. Cute. When he's things get tense. Yeah. He's, yeah. He's and okay, I must say this. For kids that... Uh, he has a medical condition. His brothers are special. Right? Mm-hmm. So for kids... Uh, I even read about things like this, like siblings who grew up with kids with special, like their siblings being special and mm-hmm. they are normal. It's hard for them. It You s- almost see your foil. He's four, mm-hmm. but he has a maturity of, I don't know, it's well, just ingrained in him. I always tell people like, he's the chosen one. He's growing up with brothers who are special. Mm. He's, he has to be extra patient. He, he can be, we can bring them to a new playground. Mm-mm. Can you imagine? And Taika is a hyper kid. <laughs> Very active. <laughs> okay. He loves to explore. He's the one that gets gets the, the shirt dirty and everything, you know? <laughs> really in the grind. Can you imagine? The playground was right in front of him. The brother had a meltdown. He didn't even get to step in the playground. We had to like... Uh, so sorry, <laughs> like we had to go because mm-hmm. it got too much for it for him. Mm-hmm. And Taika just has to like, okay, you know. He understood. He understood. Oh he is gosh. to the point where when um, my third born now, he's at the stage where uh, he's also on a very in an, on a new medication called Risperidone. Mm. It's given to people with mental illnesses, schizophrenia, bipolar. It's uh, it's like a it's a tool for them lah, mm-hmm. calm themselves down. Mm-hmm. It's called Risperidone. They also give it to people with autism when they are aggressive. Oh. So my third child, I like I said, the spectrum is very wide. My third child is aggressive when he has a meltdown. Mm. He will beat his mummy. Oh. He will, yeah, got to a point, he beat his brothers. And the brother will look at me like, Mommy, why is, why is Bilal beating mm. me? You know, that was very tough. But Taika will be the one. Like... That one time the brother was beating me. He literally stood in front of the brother, hold the hand down, don't beat Ami. And like, oh. there was also once, I was very lost, right? Mm-hmm. And my son is beating me, I'm just letting him beat me. There was also once where he had a meltdown and he just, you know, started throwing things and everything. He literally went to the brother, he hugged the brother's leg. Just hugged the brother's leg, just like that. Oh. And he's like, yeah, and this is a four-year-old. So oh I'm like, oh my gosh, Taika. <laughs> Taika Hamza kids. is... Compassionate, like just ingrained in my son. And Otala gave that in him. Like, yeah, he'll be like, you know, Ami wants to have a shower and Bilal's having like a big meltdown. Mm. And shower is like, I thought it's like a, you know, a this tap out pace, like, please do it, please do it, call me. <laughs> but no, when you have kids with autism, kids with disabilities, no mm-hmm. boundaries, what boundaries? <laughs> and I want my mommy now. Mm-hmm. So he was, she was, uh, he was having a meltdown, and I couldn't even close the door. So Taika was the one like came inside. Ami, I closed the door for you. Bila, and he started to like try to distract the oh brother, and then he would go again. And I was like, Ami, I'm so sorry. He closed the door again for me. Oh and my like, gosh! Yeah, oh that's my like, <laughs> like his, oh wow, my baby, like yeah, oh he's oh. he's and he's a joker. So he's like the father. <laughs> like <the father. laughs> so when I asked my kids, what's the best part of the day, right? Mm. And then Farrell said, hugs on the hall. My hug, really? <laughs> After all that, I said, "Oh, Taika, what's your best part?" He's like, "Blast toys." Because he got a, <laughs> he pulled out a, an art rare Pokemon Blast toys. Uh-huh. So he got sec- excited, and Daddy got excited over that too. So he was <laughs> Blast toys. He's like, no, yeah. <laughs> even in a, even in. I'm a child too, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Like there was a mommy's best award gift also, like mm-hmm. a certificate at the. The, oh. the um the school date for my ma- Mother's Day. Uh, so Taika was the one. Pharrell wrote, I love you because you are gentle and kind. Oh. He wrote that. And I was already tearing. I read Taika's comment. He's like, I love you because you make me peanut butter. 
I look at him like I didn't even make the peanut butter. I just spread it. It's not even made by me. <laughs> Yeah, so but that's so my cute. type. Oh, he is so also cute. very Gosh. funny. Um, oh, and if you see him, he's a spitting image. <laughs> yes, really? he looks like daddy. <laughs> Just without the beard. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like <laughs> daddy. Like daddy. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, yeah. my show. Bilal, Bilal's strength. Bilal, because he is non-verbal, he has cortical visual impairment. It almost feels like um, right now I I haven't breached that communication gap with him. He mm. cannot communicate with us. But I think his strength is also... Uh, there are very tough moments that I go through. Um, he is picking up something. So mm. he will go to me sometimes. Uh, sayang Bila, you do this. I'm like, yes, Ami sayang Bila. And then he will look at me, sayang Ami. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Um, my child. You can see no, the compassionate my, there. Yeah, no, I'm like, yeah, yes, yeah, sayang Ami. You know, yeah. Sayang Ami. Yeah, so um, there are moments where you see his gentleness peeking through. I'm like, oh, okay, you're mirroring. Again, the mirroring thing. Mm-hmm. You kind of see what I do. And he, he's, I think, I so, yeah, he, amongst all the three kids, he can also repeat surahs after me. Mashallah. Mashallah. Three years old. Yes. Um, of all things, because he cannot do anything yeah. other than that. His favorite surah is Surah Inshira. Um, so I would read by Innamal Usri Yusra. You know, Innamal Usri Yus, he'll go raw. Oh. Mm, for verily, with every hardship that is ease. Oh, mashallah. <laughs> yeah. Wait. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Wait you're gonna make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. So he would, he would follow Surah Inshira very well. Alam nashrah like a sod rock. He would follow rock. Wawa dona and with rock, he would say. Wow. My Bilal, yeah. Oh. Oh. No. I'm really going to cry. I think that's one of his strengths, right? He, uh, Salat, he would say Salat. Oh. Yes, Salat. And he's, he's with cerebral palsy. So he can't really do the things properly. Mm-hmm. He has a vision problem. So when mm-hmm. you're on that guinea, he will like this. There's a gap. <laughs> but he will so he said, solid. He will just He'll solid. Follow. He will follow. He will ruko. He will do everything. He's wow. yeah, uh, Bilan. He's with cerebral palsy and mm. his everything. Wow. But he's he will follow me solid. The akani he will follow. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Among the three brothers. Among the three brothers. He's the one that <laughs> really just like really follow through everything. <laughs> <laughs> one will be like over somewhere in the room that gives us a one that's baring. Taikas, Taikas literally baring. <laughs> <laughs> like, ah, yeah. Taikas the joker, but yes. Bilal will follow. I think that's one of his strengths. Wow. It's amazing. He can't do anything. Can you imagine? But... Grand. Maybe his strength would be, you know, we never yeah, know one day. Surah Inshira is so it's a thing for me now. Like Surah Inshira is something I hold in. Um, whenever time gets tough, I'm like, but in Naman Usri Yusra. I repeat that to myself and repeat wow. that to Bilal sometimes. So. <laughs> like, mm. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm, like, I'm like, this is oh amazing. Oh my gosh, amazing. Like, why is speechless? <laughs> Mashallah. Mashallah. Yeah. Mashallah. Yeah, you're, Everything you're, good comes from him. Yeah, yes. and you guys are amazing. I always, I really Mashallah. say you guys are amazing. Yes. To okay. See. To 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 end it off, right? Nice closure. Do you have anything to say to each other? As partners. After as parents? all this while. Wow. Yeah. Let's go. A lot of people are telling you, uh, apa ni? Mashallah, this couple. Yeah. Kalau tak nangis, aku yang nangis. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <Yeah. laughs> Mashallah, everything could comes from him, indeed. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. maybe just for the two of you, we leave it. Leave I think I've told you this a couple times before, lah. Hey, my God, sorry about it. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I've told you, like on and off, like throughout marriage, like if. There was a point in time in my life that I can change anything about our marriage. I would never change a single thing. From our boys, from our marriage, I wouldn't change a single thing uh, because it wouldn't make me the husband and father I am today. <laughs> oh, oh, you gonna cry? Yeah, I'm, I'm still holding this up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, is it my turn now? <laughs> okay. Um. I would like to say really thank you because um, 
you are really you know i can be like a hurricane of emotions but you really are my true solid anchor you know when you hold me down but you are a true kawam to me a true imam to me so you taught me a lot like we literally grew up with one another right so i grew up learning a lot from you and you've instilled such resilience such patience um exemplary leadership uh, to a point where i feel like you really bring out the best in me i am the mother that i am today because you would you really bring the best out of me so thank you <laughs> yeah <laughs> sorry <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we're very different. Wow. We are very different beings. Too. Yeah, we are very different. But you taught me a lot of things. Thank you for being a true kawam to me. You're so touching. Can you cry? Siapa semua main lagu? I mean, really in life, your your partner is your support, your rock, your everything. Oh, If you yeah. have the right partner, I think you can go to anything. Yeah, in life true. and the thing is crazy we are very different people mm. yeah, very very different <laughs> very but yeah. from small things so what do you like to eat very different <laughs> <laughs> to very big things like how would you handle this how would I handle it this way like, huh really you know. yeah. <laughs> but I think one thing that really sets it is it's a common goal mm -hmm. really yes. knowing like okay this is what you want to achieve oh me too okay so mm -hmm. yeah. and it's really complementing don't be too focus on the differences I must yes. 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 yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So um And I feel like whatever I like, he has. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 Complimenting each other. Yeah. 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 I really sure. feel that. Like <laughs> again, yeah. la, it boils down again perspective. Yeah. Perspective. If yeah. you are so growth. focused on the differences, uh, I think I, I feel that's where the shyting will come in. Correct. And put a wedge in your marriage. Yeah. You, so you like, do hey, to like growth to each other with each other, mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. also knowing, okay, la, he has weaknesses, but he has these many strengths, and mm -hmm. you learn from one another. So I think it's really important to have like a partnership, a constant <laughs> collaboration. And this respect for each other, lah. So yeah. focus uh, on the good things. Focus, focus on the good things. things. Focus yeah. on the good things, guys. I could have nangis. Thank you so much, Shahila and Felani. Thank, thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. Thank you for making me cry. Cookie, cookie, cookie. Ada lagi makan cookie. Cookie. Yeah, brought you cookies. Dah tahu, eh? We learned so much, right? And it's so insightful. And we hope we have raised some awareness on autism. Handling, handling uh, autism. Inshallah. Yeah. yeah. Hope so too. Handle. Sorry. All right. Yeah, my gosh. Thank you for the messages. So sweet. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you guys are so lucky to have each other through all this. Yeah. After May after this, family. after this recording, recording. After the recording, recording, we will lay on you all, Jab. But okay. oh, that's cute. Yeah. 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 Uh, thank, thank you once again. Kita dah macam tak boleh berbual. Selalunya when I when I cry right, she will take over me. Oh, so means I cannot anymore. Yeah. So guys, I hope this episode is beneficial and uh, open opens up your mind and hearts a little bit to understand people who are different from you. Try to understand them instead of looking. You know, yeah. Judging. Yeah. Judging, 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 instead of judging. judging yeah. Let's try all to understand each other. And be kind. Be kind it, to it, one it another. It takes little effort to be kind. But That's yes. true. Yes. Yes. Just be uh, kind. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. With that, before we go, <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Your, your Reno Works. Contact them at 8383-7879 and quote outside in to win attractive prices in yeah. your quotation. <laughs> yes. And Can also follow them at their social media, Y-O- U R R E N O W O R K S. Yeah, so Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook, or www.yourrenoworks.com. Yeah. yeah, go get your dream home right now. I'm gonna continue crying. Okay, <laughs> you get that strap it up. <laughs>
Till yeah. next time. See ya. Assalamualaikum. Okay.